We know it's happening all the time. Hey, Val. It's going to be uh, approximately 45-year-old male, not conscious, not breathing. Someone takes a drug, overdoses, and gets a second chance. I mean, the numbers of overdoses are staggering right now. What we don't know could save lives. We just don't know. We're very responsive right now. We're not very, as proactive as I think we need to be. Rick Brandt's office as chief of the Evans Police Department is full of second chances. So this is probably less than half of what I had just a, a few weeks ago. He's yeah. the reason hundreds of law enforcement agencies in Colorado Narcan now carry Narcan everywhere. Today, I think I've, I've been involved in training about 220 agencies. But even the chief, who's led the push for Narcan, can't tell us how many lives his officers have saved. So I've been asked repeatedly for over the years, hey, can you give us data? Can you give us data? And the answer is, I wish. I, I can't right now. We asked for that data. Hey, what's your name? From dozens of agencies. Kind of. He's in and out. He's had two doses of Narcan total at eight milligrams. Then okay. the responses came in from across the state. This stuff isn't readily available, Golden Police told us. I'm not sure we tracked that, we heard from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office. Unfortunately, we do not keep statistics on this subject, Lakewood Police responded. And there's no way to really track it. There's not a code that we can put on our computer and say, hey, I deployed Narcan. Brant knows. Yeah. That's a problem. I, right. I mean, right now we're just reacting. It's a blind spot. It's, we, we, know, we know a lot about a lot of things, but that piece is an unknown. That's a blind spot. Rob Valick runs the Center for Prescription Drug Abuse Prevention at the University of Colorado. While some police departments do keep track, he says there's no way of knowing if it's accurate because there's no incentive to do it. And so if we can get data on where do people use it, where is the need the highest, we can direct more resources there, have more naloxone available, and save more lives. The state buys naloxone, or Narcan as it's commonly known, for most law enforcement agency through its bulk purchase fund. In 2019, 10,454 doses were distributed. By 2022, that number skyrocketed to more than 124,000. That's good news, but we still don't know how it's being used. We're investing a lot of money as a state and using federal funding to distribute the product, but we're not catching, you know, not keeping up with the data collection part. You know, at the time we created the fund, we, we didn't talk a lot about requirements on law enforcement agencies. We just wanted to push naloxone out and get it out there in the community. Democratic State Representative Chris Kennedy helped create the state fund for naloxone and Narcan. Now he's considering changing the requirements for keeping track of when it's used. And to be honest, you were the one who sparked this conversation for me, reminding me of the importance of this topic. But now that it's you know, now that this is part of the conversation, I do think I'm going to initiate some conversations with folks and find out whether we want to try to take action this next year. Hey, what's your name? Wake up, bud. What's your name? Knowing more could put the right resources in the right places. If we're having a hot spot in somewhere in our community, I'm not going to throw more cops into it trying to intercept more drugs. I'm going to call our behavioral health partners and harm reduction partners and say, hey, guys, you need to focus here. Wake up. Stopping the next overdose before second chances run out. That's why it matters. Yeah. In Denver, I'm Mark Salinger, 9 News. There are some Narcan use stats in our state. Hospitals and EMS are required to report that data, but we don't know how many everyday people and how many law enforcement officers are using Narcan. There are new apps that encourage people to keep track of overdoses and Narcan use, but it's impossible to know if their numbers are accurate. In places like Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, where more departments use the apps, local health departments respond by sending resources to areas that see a spike in overdoses. Without incentives, though, or requirements to keep track, the public health experts we spoke with said it's going to be very hard to get accurate numbers here.